What up, brothers and sisters, and welcome to MTG Malone with me, Max Malone. Happy, happy Monday. I don't know, man. It's Monday. So what you gonna do about it? But I have two announcements to make. I was invited to the Cryptic Commander podcast. You can find it online already. We were talking, I know it sounds like we're talking Commander, and we did for a, maybe a minute, but uh, yeah. It's just a magic podcast, so if you're into magic, check those guys out. A link will be down in the description. Also, I heard that they were nominated for various prizes, so it's very awesome. I had a very, very good time with those guys. It was freaking amazing. Also, the giveaway is still going on until Sunday, so if you want to win some very, very awesome secret layer sleeves, Check the video over my head right now, yeah, that one, and uh, you will learn how to participate. And uh, yeah, that is all I have to say, so enough yammering, let's get into the crackling hammering. I freaking love the gold span dragon, you know me, the gold span dragon. So I tried to build a new gold span dragon deck, and oh my lord, this one is so freaking fun. So much fun. It is just so good. It has a good old adventure package. So we have the uh, Edgar Innkeeper. We have the uh, Brazen Borrower for the tempo game. We have four Bone Crushers because it's the Bone Crusher Giant and the Love Struck Beast. And these three will draw us cards with the Edgar. So that is very freaking good. And they all have another adventure. So it is Value Town incoming. Mayor of freaking Value Town. So. The rest of the deck is a very, very fun deck. We have four Anticipates to draw some cards that we need. We look at the top three cards. I was thinking about the uh, alliteration, the expressive alliteration, but it requires you to have red and a blue. And yes, it gives you one more card if you really want to, but uh, I think it is just better. I think the Anticipate is just better. And look at the art. Somebody's getting holed by a dragon. Perfect. What else do you want? Fits the theme with the gold span dragon. And then we have four Aurons Epiphany to take extra turns because we love that. And two Greatest Hench. And uh, one Midnight Clock. But our finisher, our absolute beast of a finisher is the Crackle with freaking power. If you're on 11 mana, you can just deal 15 damage. Freaking delicious. Freaking delicious, and we will get to that mana so freaking good because we have the gold span dragon. So, let's just say in the early game, you put down your adventure package, you destroy the creatures with the bone crusher, return stuff to the hand with the brazen borer, block them good in the neighborhood with the love struck beast. It is very freaking nice. And then you put down your midnight clock to make yourself even more mana, you attack in with the gold span dragon to make yourself even more mana. So let's just say that your turn is like that. Turn 4, thanks to the Midnight Clock, you are on the Gold Span Dragon. You attack in, you now have 6 mana. You can use the Auron's Epiphany next turn, attack in with the Gold Span Dragon once more, you maybe drew even another mana, so now you're on 6 mana in total, plus the Midnight Clock, plus the, four from the, gold span, uh, the 2 from the Gold Span Dragon, so you're on 9 mana. That is a lot. You're only two mana away from doing the crackle with power. If you have your great hatch out, very freaking tasty. Trust me. It is a very fun deck. I love Timor since always. It is just such a very cool color combination. Also, blue deck without counter spells. Yeah, we don't need those. We are just power them down. We are just crackling good. And even if you only do this for five, in the end, you just deal 5 damage to their face, very freaking sweet. And the Midnight Clock, very good because there's still some rogues outside. And as I said, for the ramping, it is really freaking good. Also, you have a blue mana, that means that maybe you want to use one of your pathways on the other side, like a channel bark path, uh, the Bark Channel Pathway or the uh, River Glide Pathway. Maybe you need the other side, like the red or the green. You can do that now, because you have the Midnight Clock, and you can still play your Brazen Borrower, you can still play your Orange Epiphany, and the Gold Span Dragon gives you tokens in any color. So that is very freaking nice. Alright, so it's kind of a tempo, crackle with power, take extra turns deck, which I really freaking love. So, land-wise, we have... 
two beautiful Bob Ross Islands with two beautiful Bob Ross Mountains, four beautiful, uh, two beautiful Bob Ross Forests. It's two, not four. But we have four Fable Passage. Then we have four River Glide, Lava Glide Pathways, four Crack Round Timber Ground Pathways, and four Tide Channel, Bark Channel Pathway. And of course, four Cat Rear Triumphs, because they're all the colors, and in the end game, you can cycle them. But let's be honest, <coughs> excuse me, let's be honest, not only do I look amazing like this, but also you can uh, you can just play them because it will make a crackle with power even freaking better. So, if you go to 11 mana, you deal 15 damage. It's an absolute powerhouse. If you go to, uh, what is it, 6, 8 mana, you still deal 10 damage. It is just so freaking good. And 8 mana with this deck is absolutely achievable. You will draw so many cards thanks to your adventure package with the Anticipate. You can get so many cards that you really need into your hand. With the Great Hand, you will draw so many cards. With the Aurons, you will take so many turns. And with the Gold Span Dragon, you will make yourself so much freaking mana. So, it is a very fun deck. I hope you will enjoy. I'm Matches Malone, and I will see you in those crackling games. Alrighty, infinite turns. Gold Span Dragon, what else do you want, man? Looking good, Romerito. Romerito reading a book. We are going first. Freaking love it. This hand might be a little bit slow, but if we find something, we are kind of good. And one more land and we even have a nice removal. So let's try this. I mean, the Love Struck Beast is a pretty decent creature. And as long as we find another land, we are super bueno. Super bueno. Alright, we're up against all a black deck. Okay. Oh, we found a gold span dragon. Couldn't be happier about that. That means that the crackling with power will be good very soon. Yes, 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 yes. So, I hope we find one more land. And then we're kind of perfect. And we're up against a reanimator deck. That much I can tell you. It will have white as well. Wouldn't be surprised if it does. So we need to be very fast. At least I hope we can be. At least I hope we can be very fast. But he has four pests rocking already. And we even found another land. So, very freaking good. Very freaking good. Alright, so next turn we can... Uh, just foretell the Auron's Epiphany. Get in there for some uh, 5 damage. He will block. I mean, he will block. 1 million percent. But uh, taking a lot of turns will make it hard for him to do anything. Oh. I told you there will be white. I told you there will be white. So, Mardu, Reanimator. The Bastion of Remembrance. That is pretty brutal. We got to be wary of that. So I hope we can find something, another Auron's Epiphany, eh? That's not even that bad, to be honest. Honestly, that's pretty good. So we can go Goldspan Dragon into Auron's Epiphany. Are we attacking in? I think we are. The less cards he can draw, the better. The freaking better. So we go Goldspan Dragon into Auron's Epiphany. Into Auron's Epiphany, into Crackle with Power. Seems pretty good. And even if he kills the Goldspan Dragon, we are still doing exactly that. So, are you killing my Lovestruck Beast? Please don't kill my Lovestruck Beast. So, he took the hit, which is weird. Also, we got this very awesome, yes, Witherbloom book now. Pages are still all the same, but it looks a little bit cooler, so hey, hey. So will he be missing some white? That is the question, though. The Forbidden Friendship. Holy smokes, going strong. Going freaking strong. Alright, 1, 2, 3, 4. Are we dead next turn? We're on 14. We won't be attacking in with the Lost Rock Beast, just to have a nice blocker. But we will be attacking in with the gold span dragon. Alright, so we have two blue, we have two red, so yeah, let's put down a green. Just to freaking have it. And I really hope that we can find another land here. Another land would be perfection. Freaking perfection. 
Worst case, we can still use the Anticipate. But right now, we're racing him. Real freaking good. Real freaking good. <coughs> Alright, wondering what he does. If he kills the Gold Span Dragon, I would be very sad about that. But I think he just has the uh, kill all your creatures, draw as many cards, plump the forbidden. There it is. There it freaking is. Alrighty. So, that's not even that bad. Because, uh, yeah, we lose a lot of life. But we're drawing a, uh, but we will be having two extra turns afterwards. And then with the crackle of power, we can finish him off real good. Yes. So, unless now he has the god turn, we are looking pretty good. Pretty good. Or are we? Well, it depends. If he's getting rid of the gold span dragon, we're not looking that good. But if he doesn't, we look pretty good. We look pretty good, claiming the firstborn here. That is brutal. So, he will uh, kill my Goldspan Dragon with my Lovestruck Beast, which I really don't like. But we're still taking two extra turns. So, hey. And uh, taking two extra turns means that we are getting in... Also, we will get another treasure token. So, that means that we're getting in for four. He's attacking in, of course. Why shouldn't he? Why shouldn't he be attacking in? So can we? Let me think. This is seven. If we get in for four. Well, we get in for two. That's nine. Then we're getting in for four. That is seven. And then we crackle with power. Yeah, I think we need to block here, sadly. I think we need to block here. Or did I just completely mess up my math here? I think I completely messed up because we're getting it for two, then for four. Oh, yeah. We're still good, I think. We are still freaking good. All right. So we're getting another treasure here. That is absolutely awesome. And then we are on Epiphany. That will bring him to 9. Then we are on Epiphany once more. And have the Crackle with power. So, we just uh, got him. Unless he has something very freaking awesome here. We a freaking got him. Alright. So, we don't even need to draw another land. We're freaking good. We are freaking good. So... And the turn. Doesn't look like he has something. But we will find out. He might still have something. Might still freaking have a something. So let's put down the Edgar as well. Just to be super safe that even if he has something to draw a card here. And to kill one of his creatures. We still freaking get him. So we're getting in for 5 here now. And have the Crackle with power. Thanks. It is pretty nice indeed. It is pretty freaking nice indeed. So, even if he uh, even if he kills one of his creatures to draw a card, we still freaking got him. So, we're getting ourselves the red source here just to be super freaking safe. But we can still only do it for one. Oh, we already have all of our red sources. All right, that's still fine. That is still a fine. And there you go. Crackling with power. Mmm, get in there, my friend. Get freaking in there. Mmm, yes. Nice. Thanks, man. I think it is very freaking nice. Very freaking nice. In it. Mmm, get in there. Mmm. Alrighty, the first game went pretty freaking well. If he wouldn't have blocked, if he would have blocked the Love Truck Beast in the one turn, the game would have been way different. Way freaking a different. We are going first. And I really like this hand, to be honest. I really freaking love it. Alrighty. Putting down the Edgar. I mean, why not? Could also put down the uh, little token. But no need to show him that we already have it. The selfless savior. Well, you know what? In that case, we're putting down another Edgar. 
We are attacking in. If we can get rid of the selfless savior, I would be very happy. Very freaking happy. But I think that he won't be blocking. Or maybe he is. Getting rid of the Edgar is also pretty good. So, maybe I shouldn't have attacked in, to be honest. But we will see. He has the glass freaking... Oh, I shouldn't have attacked in. Now I know I shouldn't have. Now I know I shouldn't have. But I did anyways. So we're putting down the Lovestruck Beast. Next turn we put down a little token and get the Orange Epiphany running. I uh, just hope that he doesn't have... Okay, it's a Daxus. That is fine. That is absolutely fine. And a Speaker of the Heavens. That is not fine. So, drawing some lands. Not even that bad. We're putting down the double love struck piece. We can't be playing the Orange Epiphany next turn anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And we can get ourselves another blue with the, uh, with the Fabled Passage here. So everything is still A-OK. -okay. But now I really wish I wouldn't have attacked in, but I thought it was a Winota deck. And getting rid of that, well, it's still good. It's still kind of good. Also, keeping him down is really good because of the Speaker of the Heavens. He kind of needs to block here, but he didn't. Will that be a mistake, my friend? So, either a land or a... Oh, okay, yeah, that is... That is always the good thing. Always the good thing. Having the Luris ready to rock. Always freaking sweet, isn't it? Isn't it always freaking sweet? All right, for telling this... Getting in with one Lovestruck Beast. He will still have to sacrifice one of his creatures to it. And he is. Okay. Oh yeah. It will just freaking die. Because of the selfless savior. So maybe that wasn't the smartest. Maybe that wasn't the smartest. But hey. 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 Cut me some slack here. Cut me some slack. We still have another one. So no worries. No freaking worries. So, we uh, need to get the Orange Epiphany running before anything else. The Crackle with Power is not that important right now. The moment it becomes important, we will draw more cards. The Mangara. Crazy! You're a man of culture as well. I really like this person now. Just for playing the Mangara. I really freaking do. Alrighty. So we're taking an extra turn here. If I knew that I would have drawn another blue source, I would have gotten myself something else. But hey, how was I supposed to know? How was I supposed to know? So we're not attacking in. Now we even have the other red source. That is very nice. So. If this is two, we need eight mana. We need freaking eight mana. So we need one more mana to make this very efficient. But we will find it. We will find it sooner or later. So we're only attacking in with one creature. I don't want him to draw a card. And at one damage is not that important. But him having the uh, Luris here on the field is very freaking annoying. The Elite Spell... Oh no. Oh no. The Elite Spellbinder is very bad here. Very freaking bad here. Yeah. Not gonna lie. I don't like that one. Really don't. Really freaking don't. So, how will this turn out? He has, like, the perfect everything. I should not have attacked in with my Edgar. That was a huge mistake. But he's just exploding like a champion. And not drawing too many lands. That is also very good. Attacking in with the Luris. Okay. So he can make himself an angel. Okay, as you see, very freaking good. Very freaking good for him. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really not that happy about this situation. Really not that happy. I really hope that we can find something sweet. Something awesome. Something that will help us win the game here. Would be good. Would be very freaking good. So he makes himself... Oh, okay. That could be good. Could be very good. We found an Anticipate. Well, at least it's something. And we're doing it main face, of course. Oh, the Orange Epiphany and the Brazen Borrower. And another Crackle with Power. This is a tough freaking choice. This is a tough freaking 
choice. I think I need blockers in the air. Blockers in the air. So let's get that out of our hand. He will now start to overrun us real good with angels and stuff. So yeah, we're looking pretty bad here. Pretty freaking bad. Him having the Luris was just a game changer. If he wouldn't have had the Luris, if he would have had all of these but not the Luris, everything would have been much different. But uh, hey, the dwelling in the past, never good. Our only hope is that he now draws nothing but lands and we draw some good stuff. He's getting in there with the angel. That is absolutely fine with me. We can just chump block. Don't want to lose too much life here. And him making all of these angels is very freaking bad. We now found the Brazen Borrower. I like that. Really like it. Alright, Orange Epiphany initiated. Now we're not attacking in, we would just lose our creatures. And I really don't see a way out here, to be honest, unless we draw a million freaking cards. Just a million freaking cards. Alrighty. So if we attack in with the Goldspan Dragon, it doesn't really change anything. But we are making ourselves some mana, so... Why the heck not? Why the heck not? If he blocks with an angel here, sacrifices one of his creatures, I'm kind of okay with that. But maybe he even doesn't. He doesn't. That is kind of good. So, ourselves making ourselves a lot of mana is really freaking good. And we can always return something to his hand if we really need to. Well, he has the outset of life's bounty, so we really can't do it. And he's getting so much freaking life. Oh, jeebus. Oh, jeebus. Yeah, it is looking pretty bad. And he now has a second Speaker of the Heavens. So this outside of life's bounty is also very annoying here. Very soon he will just overrun us with his angels. Very bad. Very, very bad. He's getting in with the Luris. Interesting. Pretty interesting. Yeah, that was a smart choice. Not using the uh, outside of life's bounty here was just a smarter choice. Oh man, this is looking really freaking bad. Really, really freaking bad. Not gonna lie. Not gonna freaking lie. We can't even put down the Brazen Borrower because that would mean that we just, uh, you know, lose him because he can just uh, activate the outside, bring it back next turn. We found a Triumph, we will be cycling that, hopefully find something better. Well, the Love Struck Beast, at least it's a blocker. Oh, we're missing some mana, okay. Well, doing it like this is also fine. Doing it like this is also very A-OK. -okay. Oh man, I really don't like the outcome of this, it's looking really bad. And uh, yeah, I think really soon we will be very freaking dead. Because he will have so many flyers. We only have three here. So yeah. Not much we can do here. We don't have a board wipe. So yeah. What you gonna do about it? What you gonna do about it? He's just getting in for all of this damage. We can just prevent a little bit of it for now. And very soon we will be very dead. We will just be very freaking dead. So, sacrificing, yep, this is like the infinite loop. If we don't find something good here, we're out of here. Because, uh, yeah, next turn he will get in with four angels and Deluris, giving his angels protection thanks to the outset of life's bounty and with all the other creatures. So we would just be freaking dead. Just be freaking dead. There was nothing we could have done here. Just nothing, let's be honest. Nothing we could have done here. He's on 50 life. 50 freaking life. So, no matter what we do here, we're just screwed. Because he has the outside, so the Brazen Borrower and the Bone Crusher Giant will both just freaking fizzle. K 
Can we survive here? Maybe we can. Maybe we can get rid of Dolores. And I will do my darndest. But my darndest might just not be good enough. But the Bone Crusher Giant was a very nice pickup here. Unless, of course, now he, uh, you know, finds another answer. Yeah, but he's playing it smart. Or is he? Yeah, still getting in there with the Luris. Still getting in there with the Luris. And we need to block here as well. Almost forgot. So, this is the only way freaking out. He will sacrifice the selfless savior. That moment we will brazen borrower his Luris. Maybe he, maybe he protects it with the outside. Who knows? Who freaking knows? Please do it. Please do it. Please do it. It's our only way. We have to trick him. We have to freaking trick him. Okay. That might be our way out. If we now find an answer here, this might be our way out. But we still need to find a good freaking answer. A good freaking answer. He's still getting in there. Why did he protect his... That is so weird. That is so freaking weird. Okay, we're on four freaking life. Four freaking life. We need like the most... In Good game, good game, but that Luris was just, oh my lord, I bet I gave him into his hand, I bet I gave it into his hand with the Mangara, I bet I did. So that was a pretty soul crushing game, not gonna lie. But the Luris, selfless, uh, selfless savior, outside of life's bounty protection is just in freaking insane. All right, are we up against the Yorian? It's the Luris, and we have the Midnight Clock on turn one. What else do you want? Not much, that much I can tell you. We have the Gold Span Dragon, but no red. So, the Midnight Clock will give us blue. The opponent's going first, which is very bad. Very freaking bad. If he is rogues, that is just bad. And he is rogues, okay. So. Or he isn't. Or he's just mono black. It looks like he's just mono black. All right. So we're putting down the innkeeper. He doesn't have anything here. Like to see that. Freaking love to see that. So we will draw some cards. We will just draw some freaking cards. And I will put down a red here because we already have a blue in our hand. So let's put down the blue, let's put down the love struck beast, draw ourselves some cards. We found the anticipate, like to see that. And I really wonder what our opponent is doing. Because he doesn't have anything here right now. The heartless act onto the love struck beast. That is absolutely fine with me to be honest. So how are we doing this? If we get ourselves another green. But I really think we need more red right now. Yeah, we do. We freaking do. So putting down the clock. Putting down another Edgar. Next turn we can uh, draw a lot of cards or get in with the Goldspan Dragon. And I think both are very good. Both options are very... Oh, he is rogues. He is rogues. He just didn't find a freaking... Oh, I see, my friend. But I will give you the good old gold span dragon beat down now. Freaking beat you down. I have another one ready to rock and roll. I have the midnight clock, so you can uh, mill me all you want. Do it. Do it. The drown in the lock. Okay. Are we shooting his face here? I think we should keep our Bone Crusher Giant. Or are we? I mean, anticipating is also very good. We also sp only spend one little token here. And I think getting ourselves another blue source is pretty sweet. Or even another red source. Should have gotten the green, to be honest. I just realized. Yep, should have gotten the green. 
All right, but it's no worries. No freaking worries. We're still in it. We are still freaking in it. And we can now even put down another love struck beast. Which seems very good to me. Very freaking good to me. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm not being mana efficient here, but that's the only way. Yes, way. All right, if he doesn't have anything here, we're looking pretty good. If he can kill my love struck beast, we're also still looking pretty good. The Merfolk Wind Robber. All right. But there's just one card too little in my graveyard to activate it. It needs eight. Eight to make my Bone Crusher Giant Fizzle. And we will just see what he does here. We will just a freaking see. All right, getting myself another red. We are just attacking in with everything. Let us see what he does. The Soaring Thought Thief. Well, in that case, we are... And he just surrenders. We got ropes. Mm, after the last game, this felt so tasty. Mmm. Mmm. -mm -mm. Super happy I didn't get punished by not taking a green source here. But I forgot that we have a greatest hand in there, so I really should have gotten it. This hand looks pretty good. Because we have two Bone Crusher Giants. The opponent's going first. No problemo. We got ourselves another green source. That means that we can even put it down as a blue, maybe. We will see. We will see. I will just uh, wait a little bit here. Is it another rogue stack? Oh, it's not. It's another uh, just Demir control. Could be bad, but maybe we're quick enough. I mean, he will lose a life here. So hey, so hey. Alrighty. So, I'm still keeping those cards just to make sure that we can uh, use them as we need to. He knows about our hand. He has the Maze Mind Tome. Let's shoot his face. Let's just shoot away. And then we're putting down a green source. And then we still have all the other two colors if we need them. The Midnight Clock is also pretty nice. Will help us ramp. Yeah, he's holding priority. I don't think that there's a one mana counter spell right now that I'm not uh, thinking about. So, Bone Crusher away, my friend. Bone Crusher away. And next turn we can put down the Midnight Clock if we want to. It would be very good. Not gonna lie. It is good ramp. And he's drawing cards. Like to see that. Honestly, freaking love to see that. Okay. Well, he did his job. He did his bone crushing job. So, we are putting down the midnight clock here. We're putting down another red source. And now we have our options. We do have options. So, minus three, this will become a uh, six mana. So in two turns, we even have the greatest hench, which I like very much. <coughs> so we can be putting down our brazen borrower. I don't really want to run into a counter spell. He puts down the Ashiok. Interesting. Pretty interesting. But a good choice, to be honest. The Crackle with Power. Hmm. So the Ashiok starts with 5. He will be on 6. So the Crackle with Power is not really useful here. I think that the Edgar Innkeeper is just a little bit better. Or just a little bit. Alrighty. So we will see how we can make our miraculous freaking comeback here. The Aron's Epiphany will help us pretty good with that. Pretty freaking good with that. So we're putting down another green source. And we are putting down the Edgar. And we can even foretell the Aron's Epiphany. Because we still have the Brazen Borrower in our hand. So... Let's chill here. Yes, he will make another blocker. And it's looking pretty good for him right now, not gonna lie. But he will have to do something sooner or later. Oh boy. Yeah, we're drawing a card as soon as we can. As long as we can. So now we're missing a blue, which I really don't like. I really dislike it, to be honest. That was a pretty smart choice here. 
But we can get rid of the other Edgar, because I think it is just so much better to have the Great Hange here. But yeah, we want to put down the Great Hange anyways. So no harm in that. Neutralize. Okay. Well, you don't have that for later. We are getting rid of the Edgar here. And he's only on two, on three now. So if we find a gold spend dragon or something like that, I would be very freaking happy. Not gonna lie. If we find a, uh, oh, the ominous freaking sea. I ominous sea. Okay, those weren't even that bad. So, maybe we find a blue source. Bingo. Freaking bingo. Was his name Oh, All right. So, we are attacking the Ashok here. He's on two cards. We are taking an extra turn. We will be attacking down the Ashok here. Pretty freaking sassy. Now we have the Midnight Clock back on the field. Pretty good. We still have the greatest hand. But we are we have enough. So now we put down a uh, blue source. So two of you, well, two of you can be attacking the Ashok. One can attack the face. We still need to kind of race here. And I don't think that he can draw eight cards here immediately. And we can just tick up the clock. Sooner or later, we will have a huge card advantage, which I like very much. We could also just put down the Great Hange, but it doesn't seem too appealing, to be honest. Alright, those cards were absolutely okay to, to lose. What else did we lose? Well, not too much, to be honest. The Graven Lore main phase. Interesting. Well, that draws him three cards. So the Ominous Sea is incoming, but it doesn't really help him if we have blockers. In the air. Lockers in the air. We will push our Midnight Clock now, as we have nothing to do. One more mana, we could have pushed it once more, but we will be on three already. And if we have nothing to do, we can just, you know, push the Midnight Clock. Alright. Him drawing three cards here is pretty tasty. Not gonna lie. And it's crying. Maybe you should have done it before. Just to make your uh, Graven lore even a little bit better. But hey, who am I to talk? I'm the first person to forget stuff like that. The first one. Number uno. Number one. Alrighty. We found a Love Struck Beast. Freaking love it. But if we play the Love Struck Beast now, we can't be playing our Great Hench, but it doesn't really matter. Because we're still drawing a card. And now we have one more green, which is very good. And we're also just attacking in, as we still have some blockers. And we need to be super fast here. Just super freaking fast here. He can't really be attacking in, unless of course he has now a board wipe, which would be kind of annoying. The crippling fear. Alright, is he choosing nightmares? He is? Okay. So, he will have a free attack here. That is absolutely okay. We still have a blocker for later. Oh, that was an Auron's Epiphany. Really don't like that. We still have 36 cards and we can now push the clock even once more. So hey. So hey. Very soon we will draw a lot of cards. So what even gives? What even gives? So we put in the land down, of course. I hope that we still we should still have some lands unless he milled them all. He did not. We're getting ourselves another red source now. And now very soon we will be able to push this clock into freaking oblivion. So it's on 7 now. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, we can push it onto 9. Which is very good. Very freaking good. Unless of course he now has another Ashiok. To ruin our day, but I think that we can make a miraculous comeback here. Because we will be drawing a lot of cards very soon. And we would need an Ashiok to bring back this Midnight Clock into our hand. But the second Crippling Fear was not bad. Oh, he didn't have... That was the last game. That was the last game. I mixed them up. I freaking mixed them up. Happens to the best. Which is me. The best. So. Another Snow Covered Swamp. Will he be attacking in? He is attacking in. Oh no, not the Gold Span Dragon. You monster. You absolute freaking monster. So, no matter what he does here, we need to get rid of that sucker. Just need to get freaking rid of it. Oh, the blood on the snow. That is very annoying. He will bring back the Ashiok. 
And I think that he will return the midnight clock to our hand. Yes, he does. Yes, he freaking does. Oh boy. That is very, very bad. Very bad. The crackle with power. So how much mana do we have? How much mana do we have? We have enough. We just have enough. We just have enough freaking mana. Oh, baby! Mm, what the heck was that? Awesome! Freaking awesome! He brought us there. With all his mill, he brought us there. Yes! Mm, oh, insanity! Freaking insanity! Oh, boy, would I be salty right now. Would I be freaking salty right now if I was the opponent? He played very well. Return to the Midnight Clock was the smarter choice. He couldn't have known that this would turn out like this. Alright. So. We're going first. And I like all of these cards in my hand, so why the heck not? We have to get ourselves a green here. Which is a little bit slow, but we're going first. And it's a mono white deck once more. I really dislike it. Really freaking dislike it. We have, uh, I have flashbacks right now to our last game where we went up against Mono White. But we found another Lovestruck Beast, so hey, not that bad. I really like it. And if he's attacking in here, yep, he's just Mono White. So he might be the same deck as before, which would be very freaking annoying. Very freaking annoying. So, if he has the hammer here, I'm very sad. If he doesn't, I'm very glad. And, uh, am I using... Oh, boy. This is so freaking bad. This is just so bad. Okay. Okay. So, how are we doing this? I think that we are sadly anticipating main phase because we didn't draw a land. Here is a land. It's not exactly what I'm looking for, but it is better than nothing. Because that means that we're getting a little bit closer to the gold span dragon. Putting down another heart's desire. Are we attacking in here? I think we are. I think that we are. No need not to. Keeping him small seems very good. If he wants to attack in, that's also fine with me. The Skyclave Apparition. Oh boy. Yeah, now I'm now I'm sad that I attacked in. Now I'm very sad that I attacked in. Well, it's good that I attacked in because he had the Skycliff apparition. So hey. So hey. So we're minimizing the damage, but this is just so brutal. So freaking brutal. All right. So we will push his creatures. We found another land, so that means that we can put down the gold span dragon. And I think we just need to freaking attack in here. Just need to freaking attack in with the gold span dragon. Because next turn we can take an extra turn. Alright, let us see how this turns out. But uh, getting the crackle with power online would be very freaking sweet. Oh my lord. Are you serious? Are you freaking serious? Good gaming me here. Are you serious, Lee? Good gaming me here. So he will get four life back. So this is eight. Are we dead? He has exact freaking lethal. Are you kidding me? He has exact freaking lethal. Oh man. Okay. Mono white. Get the heck out of here. Get the heck out of here. All right, so the Mono White decks got us really freaking good. But if we would have had a Brazen Borrower in hand, would have been a little bit different. Just a smidgen. He had perfect freaking lethal. We could also have waited, but then we wouldn't have had the token for the Gold Span Dragon. So yeah, no matter what we would have done, it didn't look too good. Let's be honest, the Skyclave Apparition onto my Lost Rock Beast was just... 
per freaking faction. But that one game against the Ashiok deck, holy freaking Maloney. Insanity. In freaking sanity. I freaking love the Crackle with power. It came through so freaking clutch. Oh my lord. What else do you want? Nothing I tell you. So this is a very nice teamer deck. I hope that you enjoy. The teamer adventure package is always very freaking good. The gold spent dragon makes it just so much better. And the Aurons plus the Crackle. Mmm. 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 Mm -mm -mm. I mean, you have seen in the first game how this can be an exact lethal machine. Just so freaking and nice. All right, so remember, there is a link for the podcast down in the description. Yesterday's video to participate in an awesome arena giveaway. I will be giving prizes to three of you awesome freaking people for all the support over the last six and a half months. Is it six and a half? Almost, almost. So. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. If you didn't do so already, subscribe to the channel. Become part of the Malone family. Join the Discord to chat with awesome people. I'm Matt, just Malone, and I will see you all tomorrow.